So today we're looking at a couple comparator kits from Elite 3D Design. Hopefully you didn't miss our last video where we looked at some stuff that I bought from Etsy. Well, this Elite 3D Design, these guys right here, are the ones that made several of the cool products we watched in that video. The die adjuster rings and stuff, the little shell holder holder, my 300 blackout jig, and yeah, I think that's it. Now, if you don't know what a comparator is, let me give you like a 30 second demonstration with the Hornady set. So this is a Hornady bullet comparator. It's got a little hole right there. This is a Hornady headspace comparator. Got a little bit bigger hole right there. They screw onto your calipers just like this. They tighten up with a little thumb screw yeah, right there. So that's the bullet comparator installed on a set of calipers. Then you just flip them on. Usually the bullet comparators are right about an inch. So if you're using a dial, dial caliper, sometimes it's pretty easy to still keep your numbers straight. Most of mine are a couple thousandths off, but they're, you know, they're, they're pretty darn close. And the headspace comparators are two inches. So hopefully something like that is going on with these guys as well. I think these are pretty much direct clones of this kit. It's just made with 3D printed plastic. So with our bullet comparator tool, what we do is open up the jaws. We insert the bullet in into there. Close down our calipers, give it a little bit of a, of a wiggle so that everything lines up just right. And I'm seeing 1.862 inches. So from cartridge base to the ogive of the bullet. So what you can do is in your notes, you write down that, okay, you know, this, whatever load you're working on, my overall length was 1.862 inches cartridge base to ogive. Now, if we go through a couple more, I pulled out a few pieces from the same batch of ammo I had loaded. This next one's right about the same. Yep, or exactly the same. Next one looks like it might be just a little bit shorter by about a thousandth of an inch. So what that tells you, so not only for record keeping and you know, next time we seat this bullet, we could dial in our bullet seating die to exactly the cartridge based ogive measurement that we want. It also lets you evaluate how well your seating operation is working. Like if you're taking this measurement with your reloads and you're getting numbers, you know, maybe you're getting 10 thousandths of variation here in your measurement, like something's wrong with your seating operation. So that's really, that's your, that's the purpose of your bullet comparator. The headspace comparator attaches in the same way. And if I reset my calipers, we should see that. Yeah. Two inches, right at two inches. Go ahead and zero this out. And now whenever we put our cartridge into here, it's going to come down onto the shoulder right there. So this happens to be 223 and I'm using the 330 insert, which is the smallest one that comes with the normal five piece kit. Same sort of operation, just get it in there until you get it settled down where you're getting the number, 1.4585. Let's check a couple and see if that's actually, so another thing you can do is go ahead and just zero at that point. Let's see if these others are pretty close to that one. So in we go. Looks like that one is a thousandth of an inch longer. The next one is the same as our first one or maybe half a thousandth longer. And then this one's about half a thousand shorter. Now this, this is loaded. So this brass has obviously been resized before. So as we're reloading, if we take that measurement after our sizing operation and we're not seeing consistent numbers across our brass, you know, that may mean the brass needs annealed, but you shouldn't see anything major. Like if you're just sizing your regular plinking brass, you don't anneal it. You're not really trying to cut hairs. You still shouldn't see a whole lot of variation coming out of your sizing die, you know, a couple thousands. So it can be useful on sized brass, but where it really, really comes in handy is when you're setting up your sizing die. So here is some brass that I have not sized yet. So this is straight out of my gun, essentially. So this piece is four and a half thousandths longer than the ones I had sized and loaded. So let's see if that's pretty consistent across this box. This was all fired with the same gun. Sometimes you gotta be, so that one's reading six and a half, but I'm feeling a little bit of a, I could feel my calipers maybe hitting something. If, if you're shooting hot loads and you've got, you know, maybe a little bit of pressure signs or something right there, sometimes you gotta be careful. You know, that can interrupt a measurement like this. Let's, let's just switch to a different one and try it. So this one's about four and a half. So this fired brass, obviously, you know, straight out of the gun, it has fire formed to my chamber. So whenever I'm setting up my sizing die, what I can do is use this. Yeah, here's just a straight up measurement of a piece of fired brass that reads 1.464. Whenever I'm screwing in my sizing die, we can use this measurement to only shorten this measurement by a couple thousandths. That's all that's needed. We just need enough clearance in our chamber so we get reliable feeding. So if this was, you know, if I was loading up some 223 plinking ammo, maybe I could set up my die to where, where after I size it, it comes out at 1.460. So I would bump the shoulder four thousandths. That would be considered quite a lot, really. A lot of 
times with precision rifle, you just want to barely bump it like a thousandth of an inch. So you see this in all my videos. I, I do it pretty much every time we're resizing brass. I always pull out the headspace comparator and go through this song and dance to try and size my brass as little as possible. Because if I just pull out a 223 die and size this as much as I can, this number can drop dramatically. You know, it depends on the dies and all that stuff. But you might find that if you just kind of follow the instructions that came with your die, you're bumping your shoulder like 15 thousandths, way too much. And with a headspace comparator, you can back that off, size your brass a whole lot less. That means you're trimming less. It means your brass lasts longer. It's all good. Okay, so let's move on to the star of today's program. Now our 3D printed set, it's got the exact same sizes as the Hornady. So here's that, that 330 that we were just using on 223. There's a lookup table that tells you which ones to use. You can also look up the SAMI drawing for your cartridge and there's usually you know, a line representing the datum on the shoulder and it'll have one of these numbers on it most likely. But if you get desperate, I mean, different cartridges land on different spots on the shoulder. You can see this 330 that we use for, for 22 is way down here, you know, to almost all of the shoulders in there. Yep, Hornady lands in pretty much the same spot. I mean, I guess we could try to compare the sizes. It, I don't have pin gauges to, to measure these, so best we can do is with our calipers here, but should give us a ballpark about where we're at. 325? Yeah, so we're right around 325 with that one. I think about 334 or 335 is the numbers I'm seeing most often here. Yeah, we're not trying to be precise, just kind of get the ballpark. So that's significantly bigger than uh, Hornady, right? Yep, almost 10 thousandths bigger. Does that matter? As long as they stay within, you know, okay, 10 thousandths here, we should be fine because you know, you're just making comparative measurements. Like you, with any of these, whether it's Hornady, whether it's these, or I mean, whether it's the kits from Short Action Custom, hey, hey. which if you're wanting to go the other way, like if you're not looking for something a little bit cheaper, if you're looking for something crazy, ridiculously nice, yeah, Short Action Customs has got some comparators that are insane. They incorporate a little bit of uh, shoulder angle along with diameter. So I think it just, you know, gives a really nice fit. But with any of those, no matter which ones you use, you're taking a comparative measurement. You're generally taking a before and after. You're taking a measurement with, all right, here's mine. I know that on with my setup, it reads whatever. You know, your buddies may read a little different. Good grief, let's use the damn thing. Okay, so this thing has a magnet in it. It is like that. That's how it goes on. It is a pretty darn strong magnet. It will slide. I'm not sure if that will be annoying or not. We'll see how it goes. I don't think it will. And assuming our calipers are halfway decent, hopefully we don't get different measurements depending on where our base is landing. Okay, so they attach with a magnet and the inserts are threaded. So there's our 330. The threads, I think these are printed. Yeah, pretty sure those are not tapped afterwards. And they definitely go together kind of loose. All right, you get the thread started and it's uh, kind of loose. And then we bring it down here and it seems to made up pretty well. That's something I'm worried about. You know, that's that's very coarse threading. And if you over tighten this or don't quite tighten it enough, you could see that affecting your measurements, you know? So what I'm thinking I might end up doing with mine is I, I don't have one with me, but maybe get a little Sharpie or something and take it apart and scratch it a, a touch or something. I don't know, some way to just feel like you got it back together the way it should be. Like, I, I think we're fine here, but just kind of my first concern that popped up. I guess second concern that immediately comes to mind is whether this will read the same depending on which way this goes on. Because I think, I'm trying to think for sure here, like whenever I use the Hornady kit, I always have the thumb screw pointing out the back. I'm thinking, not like I, I've never even really considered this before, but yeah, so I, I think I usually have it on the back and that keeps it indexed the same every time. But the reason I'm worried, you know, if this is not a, a parallel surface, you know, there and then down here, I can imagine that being an issue. All right, well, that'll be easy to test here real quick. Okay, so put it together and it is right around two thousandths. So it's five thousandths longer than two thousandths. We just saw like the Hornady was a little bit long as well. If we hit our absolute, there we are. Now we're, we're zeroed out on our calipers. So now with the plastic, I'm gonna try and give it a little bit harder of a push here. 
Yeah, thousandth and a half or so. And if I let go, okay. Like you, you kind of get, you get the feel for how much pressure to apply, right? And then you just start doing that the same every time. So there's really no, there's no reason I would ever be pushing on this that hard. I'm just kind of, you know, seeing if the plastic is given very much. So two and a half thousandths and then eh, almost bounced all the way. Let's try that again. It's just kind of. All right, so all my pushing and squeezing, I have definitely kind of shortened it just a smidge. So now let me try this. So let's see, that was, and I just dropped it. So hopefully it reads the same, no matter which way we go. There we are, that's, uh, I'm just gonna zero it again, get rid of that little bit of error we've, we've come across. So there's that way, rotated 180 degrees, and holy crap, well, thousand, half thousand. All right, that's really good. I was afraid that was gonna be a nightmare. I was afraid that that surface wasn't perfectly flat and you know, to exaggerate what I'm talking about here, I was afraid it was like, okay, this way, whenever it's one direction, and then this way when it's the other direction, and you know, your, your measurements are probably gonna end up being all over the place, if that was the case. So, so far, so good. Okay, so that was my comfortable tightening and we've got it zeroed. Now let's go with a slightly uncomfortable tightening. Well, that's, I, I don't wanna strip it out here, but I just wanna go a little bit tighter than I probably would. It's kind of slipping in my fingers a bit, in a good way. Like I don't feel like I'm about to strip it. Okay, a little bit tighter. Definitely not stripped out, but a little bit tighter. Okay, that maybe got us another thousandth. All right, I mean, let's try it all the way, all the way apart. So that sort of thing doesn't come across on camera, but that was definitely a pretty good little, you know, little pop to get it loose. So it was tight, so completely apart, back together and let's really kind of crank it down a little bit and see what we get. A thousandth of an inch. Good deal. Like the, these are, you know, we can deal with these sorts of, this sort of slop. Not that it necessarily is slop. I mean, I, I imagine it's probably just a, uh, you know, brand new product that after we take it apart and put it together 40 or 50 times, it's probably all going to settle out and be okay. Man, this is uh pretty interesting back together and reading just right flip around and it's the same way around there yeah if there's any it's just the tiniest little bit half a thousandth maybe let's try the bullet comparator real quick which uh, I haven't even you know, let me tighten this guy down so that's the uh, here that's the 30 caliber one let's let's switch to the 22 tell you what my terrible eyesight really appreciates these nice big labels that are very easy to read. All right, let's uh, put her together. Maybe just a little bit of a little bit of a tweak. I'll tell you what, it does seem to, it mates up nicely. Both of them have. You know, it's not exactly a blended muzzle brake here, but I mean, it's it seems to be mating up really nicely. It's not like there's maybe a gap on one side, things weren't concentric or anything. Like it, it seems to be going together pretty well. It looks like these are an inch and a half. Let me, let me zero out real quick. And, yeah, this guy comes out to 1.490. So a little bit longer, the Hornady kits, I think these are an inch. Yep, a little bit longer. And I assume that's 10,000 short of, you know, the print target or whatever. Maybe not, maybe it's meant to be that size. Let's flip it around, see if we get the same reading. Exactly the same reading. All right, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can screw it up by, let's say we, were, we weren't paying attention and our comparator moved. Trying to look at my jaws through the, can we go like basically all the way? I think so. It actually read, <laughs> it reads exactly the same in there. And it, you know, the flat surface here, like half of it was hanging off of that. So that's pretty cool. And I guess one good thing is the flat surface on my calipers are right about the same width as this. So that'll kind of be a good visual cue as you're working, you know, just kind of, if you start seeing that, or maybe you can't see the, the shoulder, you know, like you need to, center it a little bit. I just don't know that it's gonna be a problem. Let's try it out toward the tip, 1.4895. So that's a half thousandth shorter than what we read in the middle up there. Let's try one more time. Out here at the end, 1.4895, good deal. So that that's something I'm still gonna worry about and it's something I wish wasn't happening here, but I don't think it's really gonna, it's not gonna cause me 
any big issues, right? We're not going to blow our face off because our comparator slipped. Tell you what, while we've got the bullet comparator out, let's read these four. So we know from the from the Hornady, they all read the same. So first one here, just kind of getting it in here and moving it around. I should get one of the anvils. There's another piece that goes on this side, and these guys actually make one. I'm just I'm just cheap. Hornady makes one, and it's 15 or 20 bucks, and I've just never been in the mood to spend 15 or 20 bucks on something when I can just, you know, wiggle my brass a little and get there the, the same way. But I might end up, how much is that? Hold on one second, let me look it up. Yeah, so their, their magnetic anvil is $9. I think I'm gonna get one. All right, after messing with this here for a minute, I think this is the number that I'm coming up with, 1.8695. So let's zero our calipers. First of all, let's see how easy it is to get this one back to that number. So up into there, down to here, a little bit of a wiggle to straighten it out, and we're there. Okay, let's try the next piece here. That guy is one thousandth of an inch shorter. The next piece is back to perfect, and maybe half a thousandth short. And last piece is right on the money. So that I mean that was perfectly acceptable cartridge based O drive measurements there. If you ask me. All right, so this one's zeroed out with this this one right here. So let's, let's keep a track of that. Let's take this off and close that up and let's turn them off and let's unscrew it. All right, so completely apart. And then let's go back together here. Okay, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, mm, calipers on, zeroed out, and I'm an idiot. So I'm an idiot. I, I lost my zero, obviously. I'm trying to think back a few seconds ago. 1.8695 was our number, right? Okay, whatever. So I do want to do this, but this time I'm going to be smart and I'm going to write it down. All right, we're going to call it 1.869 and I'm going to tear this thing apart, put it all back together five times. And we'll see if we end up at the same spot. All right, so this is the last of our five tests, and we're still where we started, pretty much. I think maybe I've come down a half thousandths or so, like 1.8685, I think, is the number I'm uh, seeing more here. Yeah. So as I was taking it apart and putting it back together, I was trying to give these threads a good work. I, is is seeding threads a real thing? Like that's, I guess that's kind of what I'm maybe trying to get to, just tightening things up and. So everything settles in and hopefully comes up with a repeatable spot. Looking at the numbers as I went along, like I said, it did seem to maybe get a half thousand shorter after the first couple, but not too bad at all. And the bullet comparator is the one where I worry the most about, you know, this sort of drift, if you'd even want to call it. Like if it's going to exist, it's going to be a bigger pain in the butt with the bullet comparator, because this is the one where you know, you'll make notes about overall length and maybe you won't load that load again for a year. So maybe in that year you've been using this on a whole bunch of other stuff and maybe it's worn a little bit or maybe the threads have gotten settled in a little bit, bit more, but I guess it's, it's self-correcting, right? You're, you're zeroing it every time you use it. Which now I think about that, I mean, I'm, I'm a total idiot. I was, I was zeroing it before every one of the measurements I just took. So any change here with this device, as long as it didn't mess up the our contact points, right, where it touches our bullet here or where it touches our calipers there, as long as nothing gets screwed up there, then the rest gets zeroed out and it really doesn't matter. All right, here's, here's what I wanna do then. Let's jump back to the headspace comparator. We'll make this test a little bit easier. I'll just measure the total length of this guy, 2.258, and I'll go ahead and just zero it because we're not gonna zero the calipers anymore after this. So let me double check that, make sure it comes up to zero. Yep, went straight to zero, and I'm trying to come straight across that, that gap there. So good, we've got a good zero. So now let's just pull this guy apart and screw it back together a few times, which we should be able to do this one quick. No change the first time. This time I screwed it on a little bit tighter, maybe half a thousandths. That time we're back to zero. <laughs> just put it in and I'm like, a quarter of an inch? What in the world is going on? Yeah, oop, accidentally. I accidentally put it all the way in. I tell you what, this will be the last measurement because this thing ain't moving. Yeah, it's zero. So are we done? Like I'm, I think we're pretty much done. So I just started taking some measurements with the 
head, headspace comparator and did run into something a little bit annoying here. So I think 1.440 is our number. But what I'm running into is that there is a fair amount of gap between the caliper and the slot. So whenever I was trying to get this thing, you know, just right so I would get a consistent measurement, I'm getting a little bit of this sort of stuff going on here that I'm finding a little bit annoying. Maybe the anvil would, would really help me here because, you know, normally I, I kind of go to this point and then just kind of try and let it find its happy spot. But like this one right now, it already kind of cocked a little bit sideways on me. But I mean, once you get there, you're okay. 1.4395. That last one was what? 1.440, half a thousandth longer. Yeah, this is the one before. Get it right at. There it went. It just went. It just kind of went. So that. I'm, I'm finding that pretty annoying here. I don't know why I didn't notice it during the bullet comparator when I was messing around with it, but you know, 1.440. Now, when I stopped trying to do it through my camera viewfinder and actually, you know, had it right up in front of me, it's a little bit less annoying. But, you know, right here where I've got this thing perfectly aligned and I'm getting the measurement that I know is right, if it just, you know, bumps a little bit, then you can really get it out of whack very quickly. So I'm thinking... I might try and come up with some way to shim that a smidge or something. Yeah, I'm not sure there. I would just, I would like that not to be like that. All right, folks, last measurement of the video, I promise. I, this is why I broke this into a separate video instead of putting it with the rest of the, of the Etsy shopping spree stuff because I knew I would want to mess with these a lot and I'd be rambling on for a long time. All right, looks like this one's 1.4405. So I'm getting good measurements. I'm getting measurements that I trust, especially with the, the headspace comparator. Like I mentioned, this is, it's all about setting up your bullet seating die. I was going to do that in this video, go ahead and set up a seating die, but I do it in all my videos. Tell you what, if you, if you have these, please give us a durability, repeatability, overall impression down in the comments. For me personally, you know, the, the bullet comparator set would be really nice to have. And you know, this sets 10 bucks, so that's good. He does have the bigger set with 14 different sizes uh, that go all the way up to 45 caliber. So if you're shooting 338, 358, 458 bullets, the 14 insert set is what you'll want. But for me, this the, the standard $10 kit covers everything I use and then some. A Couple of those I probably won't be using anytime soon. But I think this is the real gem the Hornady kit is just a little bit too expensive, you know, to justify for a brand new reloader who's maybe not worried about precision or whatever. Just wants to load up some plinking ammo, maybe some hunting ammo. $17 to help set up your seating die is a whole lot easier to justify than, you know, $50. Especially, you know, when they come with a bunch of inserts you, you may not need and stuff. So this might just be the answer. I'm, I'm going to start using these. Like all my videos, these are my new comparators. Until I come up with a reason not to use them anymore, or enough has, time has passed where I feel totally confident in recommending them and want to move on to play with something else, you know? So, so I think that covers it, folks. I appreciate you joining me today. If you are still trying to order one of the fart extractors from that video, we have wiped him completely out of stock. And he, he put a note on Etsy that says he'll be adding nine to 10 each day. So he's got his printers running 24 seven, I imagine and he's doing what he can, but he mentions that you can favorite the item and Etsy will send you a notification. So if you go over to the page, there's a little heart at the top right corner of the picture, at least on a desktop browser, that's where it's at. So apparently if you do that, it kind of gives you a notification or something when it comes back in stock. Now I will say, I, th I think this Elite 3D design is a little bit bigger outfit. You know, he's got some more printers or something because most of the other crap we covered is still in stock. So hopefully it'll be the same way with these bullet comparators and headspace comparators. All right, that's it, folks. See you guys next time.